Bar for bar album reviews. Hitler wears Hermes 8 side B. Hitler wears Hermes 8 side B is the second half of West Side Gun's recently released Hitler wears Hermes 8 side A, which dropped just about a month prior on August 27th. Originally, it looked like we'd be getting side B a bit closer to that release date, but it was slightly delayed to everyone's dismay. Just like with side A, however, I feel the extra time given for this tape was well worth it. When we see a continuation or sequel to any given project, it's pretty common to expect something similar to the original, especially when it's like a side A, side B sort of thing. With side A, I think a lot of people, myself included, expected to mostly hear West Side Gun, but instead what we got was a way for him to showcase his newer artists. This wasn't a bad thing, and I actually like that he did that, because I'm pretty sure he knew there was going to be a lot of ears on that tape, so it made sense to put new artists so they could get attention. The difference with side B, though, is that there's a little bit less of him showcasing Griselda talent alone, it, it feels, and it feels like he's more present here as well. Like We do still get a lot of features, which is pretty typical of a West Side Gun project, but it definitely feels more of his project, especially the way that it feels like it's more curated. And he really put on display both his rapping and AR skills here. The similarities between side A and side B begin right at the beginning with how both projects start off. Both of them start with two intros, with the second being a spoken word piece from A. Rashid. With side B, things start off with Brody Lee which I can only assume to be a tribute as well as a moment of silence for the late wrestler, since it's really just an instrumental intro. This then leads into the A.A. Rashid intro, like I mentioned, and how you start. To me, this intro, it feels like a way to allude to this being the final in the Hitler Wears a Mez 8 series by having A.A. Rashid saying, you can really only do eight things in music while also tying in some numerology. Once they started getting to the numerology bit, I low-key expected them to bring up turning the number eight sideways to make an infinity symbol to say something like how things like music are infinite. <laughs> but aside from that, after the intros, we get straight into the wrapping with what's essentially a Griselda crew cut, Hell on Earth Part 2. This beat is great and pretty boom bap, which all three of the Griselda boys handle really well. It's Pretty clear, at least to me, that this album was a collaborative effort between West Side Gun, the features, and the producers. Like they're all in the same room recording at the same time. Because of the effects on the beats, as well as just the general additions to the sound, like the sound of the track. The best part on this track to me has to be right when West Side Gun ends his verse saying hallelujah, which then goes into a sample that goes hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to sing the king and then right into Benny's verse. The juxtaposition of this godly sound and Benny's aggression is just wild to me, but it's perfectly on brand for these guys. And that's one of the examples of where I feel they were all in the room together, because I'm pretty sure the beat wasn't already made like that. <laughs> like, they had to probably adjust it, because they're like, oh, wow, that'd be dope, let's do that. The bars don't stop there, because on the following track, Free Cutter, we get a feature from Jay Electronica, who does his best to West Side Gun imitation with gun ad-libs on his verse. But his verse is also pretty solid. I feel like he's been popping up on features more and more since he's released his album last year, almost as if something, like, someone reminded him that he can rap. Uh, this then goes right into the Mad Lib produced track, Richie's. I knew that Mad Lib had a track on here, but I didn't look at the production credits prior to listening. However, once this track came on, I could tell it was his, and that's almost entirely because of the intro sample, as well as the nearly two minute outro, which is taken directly from a French interview from Coco Chanel. To be fair though, the outro could have been Wes Agon's idea as well, because of how much focus he has on fashion, but to do such a long snippet I feel is something that only Madlib would be like, yeah, I'm doing this. It also would make sense for him to, what's that gun, to include that snippet because it's really appropriate and on brand for him and the rest of Griselda because it has Coco Chanel talking about how people are imitating her style, 
which is something that Griselda has addressed in the past as well. The Coco Chanel snippet leads well into the next track, Julia Lang, which starts off with her seemingly talking about West Side Gun and their experiences together. The actual rap portion of this track has been out for some time, I think it dropped in like March or something, but has since been updated with inclusions from Trapaholics, a name that many of us haven't heard in some time. I'm not entirely sure as to why he chose to have their tags here, but it works. And I do wish we had gotten another verse with this track though, as it kind of fades away at the end and feels slightly unfinished. Like it just feels like it was thrown in there as a snippet. And maybe that's why we had the Tribaholics uh, tag there, because like, you know, on mixtapes and stuff, it's not so common to have a completed track all the time, but I don't know. As we go through the rest of the album, there are a couple of moments where I feel there's a little bit of a lull, like with Best Dressed Demons. That's not to say it's a bad track, because I do enjoy it. I think maybe it just broke up the flow enough for me to notice it and just threw me off. And honestly, that's not a bad thing, too, because when you have such a long album, sometimes you need a break to kind of process everything that you've been listening to. Things pick up back for me with Forest Lawn, with 2 Chains and Armani Caesar. The 2 Chains feature completely threw me off when I first heard it because for some reason I didn't know he was going to be on here. <laughs> His verse and flow is really solid and works well with the production. And he also just fits in really well with West Side Gun and Armani Caesar, which I think is pretty impressive. We get another feature from Mach on the track R.I.P. Bergdorf where we have him and West Side Gun trading verses, similar to how they did on Pray for Haiti. The production is from Nicholas Craven, and as always, he does a fine job. It's at this point in the album where I feel like it lulls a little bit again with TV Boy and Survivor Series 95. TV Boy isn't bad, as it has that more traditional Griselda sound, but I think what I don't really like about it is how it sounds like West Side Gun is a bit muffled. Uh, with Survivor Series 95, I feel like I'm just disappointed because I may have had really high expectations for a track with Jay Worthy and Larry June. I don't think it's really an issue of any of their verses, but maybe more of the instrumental here. Like, it's a solid beat, and it's just a fun instrumental for sure, but maybe there's a little bit too much going on, and the flows of everyone on this track differs enough that it's like, I don't know what's happening. It's also pretty long at 7 minutes, so maybe that contributes to it as well. We return to the wrestling references with Eddie Kingston, who's currently working with AEW. I like this track because we get to hear from one of the stars of Side A, Rome Streets, who brings in a really solid verse and carries a very consistent rhyme scheme throughout it. I also thought the stash and dope from the plates that I ate off, like Hitler first name, line was a really slick too. Following this, another star from Side A, Stove God Cooks, gets his own track with Ostertag. I just love hearing him and can't wait to hear what he's got cooked up with West Side Gun. Quite possibly my favorite track on this project is Munch, and that's almost entirely because of the way Conductor Williams just took over the entire ending of the track with his producer tag. Conductor, we have a problem! Conductor, we have a problem! And just repeats it like eight times. The rest of the beat is solid for sure, with this almost off-key xylophone instrumental in Heavenly Sunshine sample. It's actually something that I would expect from someone like Madlib, especially the way that it kind of distorts at the end of every few bars. For some reason, the remainder of the album just kind of blends together for me. I'm not sure if it's because it's just the end of the album and my ears are tired and can't differentiate the tracks at this point. Um, or something else, but I mean, it's not that I don't like these tracks because 99 Avericks and The Fly Who Couldn't Fly Straight are really enjoyable tracks. I especially like The Fly Who Couldn't Fly Straight because of Tyler Creator's more laid back and carefree sounding flow. To be fair though, I've really just been liking everything he's been doing since he dropped Call Me If You Had Lost. Like, it's like he's got excited to rap again and just have fun. Overall, I really enjoyed Side B. Even though I personally feel like Side A should be thought of as a different project with a different goal it was trying to accomplish, I feel like we still kind of have to compare the two. I still do like Side A, but it really, it's really because it acts as a showcase for the new Griselda artists and because it's a little bit shorter. 
I'm someone who primarily listens to albums like all the way through rather than listening to playlists or individual songs. So I like to be able to listen to an album in one sitting if possible. Uh, with side B, it is a little bit longer, so that's a little bit harder. It's like 25 minutes longer. Um, but I also feel the goal was to bring more of a traditional Griselda sound while also modernizing it with features outside of the Griselda camp. That more traditional sound may also be a slight turnoff to some newer listeners, since there's typically a bit more of like a build up to the tracks and they often have longer sample snippets. Um, whereas side A, I guess, may get to the point quicker. Personally, I th I think I like side B better, but that may change as I listen to them both some more. My favorite tracks are Munch, Hell on Earth Part 2, Forest Lawn, 99 A Bricks, and Free Cutter. Although this may be the last in the Hitler Wears Hermes series, at least according to West Side Gun, something tells me that he may decide to bring it back in some way later on. Of course, we're going to get some more music from him, like, just in general, so it may not be a necessity, but it's just very iconic. As always, though, I look forward to whatever it is that he and Griselda have coming next. That's all I have for this review, though. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of Hitler Wears a Mez 8 Side B, and if you prefer this one over Side A. Also, let me know what your favorite tracks are. Also remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more content and reviews like this. Thank you for watching and please stay safe out there.